Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to Scripture and Prophecy. Today is Friday, November 17th, 2017, and today we are doing our gospel portion for this week, which happens to be Luke chapter 3, which deals with one of my favorite, if not my favorite person out of the New Testament, uh, other than Messiah, uh, and that is John the Baptist, the Elijah figure, the one preparing the way um, for the Messiah, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is here, and just love this guy. Uh, he's out in the wilderness, he doesn't care about the world, he's not interested in anything but serving God. Scriptures say that he even jumped in his mother's womb because he was filled from the Holy Spirit right from the get-go when Mary shows up to her Aunt Elizabeth being pregnant with the Messiah, with the Christ child. And I just really, really love this guy. And I'm kind of sad of, of how, you know, he goes from being this one crying in the wilderness to then being imprisoned by king by the king and then, and then just ultimately being beheaded. And, uh, you know, he has some problems, you know, it even has a faith breakdown at one point uh, that we'll get to at some point in our uh, journey and our study in the Gospels. But just love this guy, John the Baptist. Uh, he's an he amazing character, amazing person uh, who did an amazing work uh, preparing the way for, for Messiah to come. Uh, real quick, hey, at the website, uh, I used to do this thing where I would post several videos or podcasts or teachings almost every day or every couple of days um, I've recommended things that I think you should that be worth checking out and I stopped doing that about a year or year and a half ago um, doing that again so if you go to scriptureandprophecy.com you'll see recommended news teaching and content and these are just videos from other content creators that I post and try to update several times a week um, the only time I really don't mess with trying to update it is is on the weekend. And then about the middle of the page is all the par podcast archives. Um, you know, we've been doing mostly Bible studies here for, for quite some time. Um, I am going to do uh, some more prophecy and headline type podcast. Uh, uh, we've got, I've got a couple uh, in the pipe already that I want to you know, talk about. Um, I'll probably do one next week talking about the ray, the rising of artificial intelligence and stuff like that. The sad thing is, and, and I bring this up all the time, the sad thing is, is a very small percentage of you, a very small percentage of you compared to those who are actually subscribed to YouTube, subscribed through iTunes and things like that. Just a very small number of you actually tune in and listen every day uh, to the Bible studies. And uh, But when I do... A podcast that's dealing with end times or really strange news or giants or you know stuff like that then they people come out in droves to listen and I guess I'm saddened that people are more interested in headlines than they are in the actual words of God the actual love letter from God the actual history of God and God pe God's people and uh, just for whatever reason that just kind of bums me out uh, that so few people uh, want to hear the word and uh, to those of you who tune in all the time who who prefer and, and love the, the Bible readings and the teachings and stuff like that um, I just first of all I just thank you for listening and it's also those of you who actually support the show you guys are the ones who are the Patreon subscribers or the PayPal donators you guys are the ones going to the prayer wall at, at scriptureandprophecy.com and praying for me and praying for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, you guys are the ones. And look, it's always this way. It's this way within a church community. It's this way within any faith-based community. A majority of the work is done by a small group of people. And so I just want to thank you, uh, those of you who actually care about the Word of God and actually care about me and what I'm doing and the work that I'm doing. And you're not just looking for headlines. And so I just wanted to take two seconds to or actually four minutes uh, to, to say all of that. All right, let's do what we actually came here to do, which is study the Word of God. We're going to be reading Luke chapter 3. Uh, that is the gospel portion for this week. Uh, Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 18, actually. Not the whole chapter. Just through 18. Um, so 
let's uh, let's have a look at this. Luke chapter three, verse one. Now on the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ityria, and of the region of Trachnatus, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Alabin. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Now, quick thing, most people kind of brush over. Annas and Caiaphas being high priests that year. Now, there's only supposed to be one high priest. And the Chronological Gospels commentary says that these two men, Annas and Caiaphas, were not actually selected by God to be high priests. They were selected by the Roman government and appointed to those positions. Yohanan, that is John, the Baptist we're talking about here, that's the one that the Word of God actually came to. He was the divine appointed high priest, the one appointed by God. So it says, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, comma, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, it's talking about Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his paths straight. Now, the writer here is referring to a prophecy by Yeshiahu, that is, Isaiah. And you can find that in chapter 40 of the book of Isaiah, and this is what Isaiah says in verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Yahovah. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And that is what John is, is saying here. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. Verse 5. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough way shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath that's to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Love this guy. John the Baptist, he's saying, you know, the, the multitudes are coming, and he calls them vipers. He's like, this is a generation of vipers. Who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come? But he's saying, come, and you'll see the salvation of God. But he says, don't you, and make sure you're coming with worthy fruits of repentance. In other words, none, none of this false repenting, none of this garbage. Don't you dare say to yourselves, we have Avraham as our father. Because that was the mindset of many Jews. People, oh, I'm a descendant of Abraham. That's all that matters. Er, wrong again. John the Baptist says, For I say unto you that God is able out of these stones to raise up children for Abraham. So don't be thinking. Don't be leaning on that. As a matter of fact, Paul goes on to say that those of us who are a Messiah, there's no longer Jew or Greek or Gentile. We're all the seed of Abraham in Messiah. Verse 9. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's a very, very serious statement he's saying there. He's saying you better be bearing fruit because if you don't bear fruit, what do we do with trees that don't bear food? fruit? We chop them down, we throw them into the fire. And then the people ask, verse 10, saying, What shall we do then? And he answered, saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. John the Baptist is saying, 
Same thing that you'll see Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah say. Talking about what does it look like to walk this out, and it's about loving your brother. Because he's saying, look, don't think that Abraham, you can say that Abraham's your father. God can raise up children for Abraham out of these rocks. If you're not bearing fruit, you know, the axe comes and chops that kind of tree down. And it's thrown into the fire, and people are saying, okay, what are we supposed to do then? And he says, this is what you're supposed to do. If you have two coats, you need to give one to somebody who doesn't. Same thing with food. Taking care of the, you know, it's so simple. And then the publicans, we're talking about tax collectors, come. Verse 12, Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. Verse 14, And the soldiers likewise demanding of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. Be content with your wages. That's convicting. How many of us go to work sometimes and we're like, man, I'm so underpaid for this work. I'm guilty of that at times. John the Baptist is saying, be content with your wages. He's telling these soldiers specifically, you know, don't be pushing people around. Don't be doing violence to people. Don't be bearing false witness against them and be content with your wages. Verse 15. And as the people were in expectation, all the men mused in the hearts of John whether he were the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And many other things in his exhortation preached, he unto the people. I'd like to know what some of those many other things are that he preached that's not written down here. Oh man, I, you know it's only eighteen verses, but I just I just love the story. Let's go back. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, "We have Abraham as our father." For I say unto you that God is able of these stones that raise up children unto Abraham. And I want to look at Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, which says, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. You know, because all these people are saying, what are we supposed to do? And then John's saying, you need to take care of those people who don't have a coat, who don't have food. And that's what Isaiah is saying. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Verse 18, come now and let us reason together, saith Yahovah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be like bread, like crimson, they should be as wool. And then we go to James. Chapter 1, verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Awesome study this morning. I don't know. I just really, I just really love John the Baptist and his boldness, and he's out in the wilderness and he's baptizing people, and he, he's just not holding back. As a matter of fact, and we'll find out as we read on. One of the reasons, uh, or the actual reason that he's put in prison, is because he would openly speak in public against King Herod, saying it is not right that he has taken his brother's wife. Of course, King Herod took his brother's wife, and we know that whole thing. And if you don't know it, we'll know it soon enough as we continue to move forward with our study in the Gospels. But that, but his boldness is eventually what lands him in prison, and then ultimately what gets him beheaded, because he was calling out sin. You know, this is a man who wasn't interested in the world at all. He was wearing camel's clothes. Uh, he was eating wild locusts with honey and dunking people in the Jordan River, telling people to repent, to repent kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. We're paving the way for the Lord, for Yahovah. 
and uh, just just an amazing guy. Well, hey, that's the study for this morning. Not very long, but we only had 18 verses to work with this morning. So, uh, but that is our gospel portion for this week. Next week, I'm going to try to do a headlines and prophecy style podcast. I haven't done one in a long time. There's so much to talk about. Uh, the reason why I don't do that often is because I just, you know, I just prefer to spend my time thinking, dwelling on the Word of God and not so much on headlines. But uh, unfortunately, I think it is necessary uh, if we're going to be the type of people who are paying attention and watching for Messiah that we need to understand what's going on in this world and compare it with Bible prophecy and so forth. So uh, next week, we'll try to dig into that. Uh, thank all of you again who support this mission, who make it possible, who support me and my family, um, who pray, all of those things. Thank you so much. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, have a great weekend. God bless.